Okay, so there's really a couple different ways that we might use dimensional analysis in chemistry. One is we hopefully have already taught you what the mole is by now, and if not, let me know. But um, we can look at the periodic table and say one mole of carbon is 12.01 grams of carbon, and that it's also one mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that something. And we said a mole is really, it's kind of a number the way a dozen is, right? So if it's a mole of just an element, then we say 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. If it was a mole of, for example, um, carbon dioxide, we would say this equals 44.01 grams, okay? That's its molar mass, which is also hopefully something we're pretty familiar with at this point. Um, but it would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules that all look like CO2. And then from here, we tend to ask um, all sorts of questions about this, all right? So the ones that I was going to work with today um, were if I had 180 grams of water, okay? And I can actually ask all sorts of questions about just 180 grams of water. First, I can say, how many moles are there? And I would say, all right, I'm going to just follow my rules. All right, I'm going to ask how many moles. My rules tell me that something must cross out. Well, the only unit I have right now is grams, and I want to be in moles, so it must be the word gram that crosses out. And again, hopefully by now, we're pretty firm on molar mass, so this would be 18.0 grams of water is one mole of water. So here, I would already be grams and grams cross out, one mole of water equals 18.0 grams. So in this particular problem, I would already be done. I would take 180 divided by 18, and I would get, oh, I have 10 moles of water. I can be as fancy or as not fancy as I want to with these questions. I could say I have 180 grams of H2O. I could say how many atoms of um, hydrogen do I have, all right? I could say atoms of hydrogen. And in that case, I would still say, okay, I've got grams, and I basically know how to go from grams back to moles. I can take shortcuts later on in life, but for now, I'm going to just kind of go step by step and say, I'm in grams. The thing that I'm most comfortable converting with grams is 18 grams equals one mole of H2O. And then here we get into ratios, and we say, okay, first off, rule number one, something crosses out. Great. Rule number two. I wrote down an equal statement that's one. One mole of H2O equals 18 grams. Also great. I want atoms of just hydrogen, and I say to myself, okay, this is where we look at the formula and say H2O tells me that there's two moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen, but first I gotta follow my rules. My rules say something must cross out. So if I have moles of H2O up here, I must have moles of H2O down here. And for every one mole of H2O, I have two moles of hydrogen. That's a ratio, that's always true, so we could also consider that an equal statement. Rule number one, something cross, must cross out, moles of H2O, crosses out with moles of H2O. Rule number two, this must be a true statement, there are two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of H2O, so also true. And then I have to keep going because I want to be in the word atoms, but I'm still in moles. And then my last step says, okay, rule number one again, moles is on top, so moles has to be on bottom. This time it would be one mole of H. And one mole of H would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of H. So again, I say, did something cross out? Yes. Is this an equal statement? Yes. So in my calculator, I would end up doing 180 divided by 18 times 2 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, which 10, 20. So it should end up being, I think, 1.2044 times 10 to the 21st, fourth atoms of H. And we could have, again, asked for all sorts of things on this. Um, once we get used to using dimensional analysis as a tool, we can ask a lot of different questions. Um, let's do one more. Let's say I've got 4.4 grams of uh, CO2. So again, I'm starting with grams. I gotta get rid of the word grams. Rule number one tells me something must cross out, so grams of CO2 has to be in the bottom. 44 grams is one mole of CO2. That's the molar mass definition. So again, something can cross out because grams is on top, grams of CO2 on bottom. And then again, I know that moles, one mole of CO2 equals 44 grams. And then this particular question asks for, I can ask for anything, right? But let's say I'm asking for atoms of oxygen. And I'm just going to worry about setting it up here. Moles of CO2 is on top. That means moles of CO2 has to go on the bottom. 
And again, for every one mole of CO2, I would, I would personally go to moles of oxygen. There are multiple ways to do this. And I would say for every one mole of this guy, there are two moles of oxygen, just so I'm writing everything out. And again, I check my rules. Can something cross out? Yes, one mole of CO2, one mole of CO2, top and bottom. Is this a true statement? Yes, it's a true statement. There are two moles of oxygen in every one mole of CO2. And then my last step would be to say one mole of oxygen is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. Again, I check my two rules. Something can cross out. Moles of oxygen on top, moles of oxygen on bottom. Is this something that equals one? Yes, a mole of oxygen equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. And then I do my math again here, and I end up with um, probably 3.011 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So those are just some quick examples.